I know that the record label considered it unreleasable because I immediately started getting calls from journalists who were getting leaks from the record company. And one of those phone conversations was, um, I just got off the phone with Gary Gersh. He says he can't release the new Nirvana album and it's your fault. Would you like to comment? <laughs> uh, so it, it went to the very highest levels of their company, the, and at, to, at, up to the very highest levels of the, the Capitol or Geffen or whoever it was at the time. Uh, there was an effort to shut down that record and make the band do it again. The band dug in their heels to an extent. They said, no, this is the record. We like the record. We want to release it. They had some minor complaints about some of the songs and they wanted to remix them. There were two or three songs that were remixed, but the record that ended up in the stores is the record the band wanted people to hear. And they released a record that they were proud of. Nirvana were, were peers. We were sort of of the same scene. They, they were in an unusual circumstance in that they had gotten famous, you know. But I still considered them peers. I considered, considered them part of the same circle that we had all grown up in. So working with Nirvana was not intimidating in that respect. The, the pressure that they were under, like, was, it was immediately apparent to me that they were in a different world in that regard. There have been several brief periods where different idiomatic elements of the underground or the legitimate music scene have been brought to the surface and have been sort of skimmed by that industry, the mainstream industry. And that sort of culminated with Nirvana becoming the biggest band in the world. And this was, Nirvana was a band very much of their local music scene, very much uh, like peers with and, and fraternal with all the other Northwest punk bands when they became successful to on a on an international scale and became a huge phenomenon then that sort of started a feeding frenzy with the big record labels where the big record labels were trying to find a, other like unpolished gems in the underground music scene that they could turn into commodities like that when that feeding frenzy died down and uh, all of those all of the bands that were plucked from the underground into the mainstream, like very few of those had any measure of success in the mainstream. Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto.